Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Sam and a very warm welcome back to another video here on the Arabic with Sam channel. I'd just like to begin by thanking everyone from the bottom of my heart who has signed up to the Arabic in 60 Steps program. It is you guys who make it all happen, it's you guys who, you know, who are the reason that I can afford a little pen tablet to make my videos on, it's you guys who are the reason I can afford to spend my time on this, and it's you guys that I can afford, it's because of you guys that I can you know, buy a little microphone and stuff like that, and I can sort of support myself and stuff like that. So you guys are the ones who kind of make it all happen, and uh, you make it all happen just by buying a buying an amazing course, if I say so myself. So um, obviously today we're cracking on with uh, lesson seven. You know, we're up to lesson seven in the story of Prophet Hud alayhi salam. We met. We met Prophet Hud only in the last chapter of the chapter before. You know, it had mostly been focusing on his tribe or the tribe of Ad. So um, so let's crack into it. Let, let let's get right into the language, just like we have done previously. So we have here, you know, th this book loves to use idafas in the title. You know, it absolutely loves to use idafas. You always have the the message of Hud or the the dawa of of Hud or the you know the tribe of Ad. And here we have Jawabu. You know that it can't have L at the beginning, even though this word means the answer. We, it can't have L because this is the mudaf. This is the thing that is being owned by the qawm. Um, the qawm is the nation, you know, we did talk about it in the last lesson. So the, the response or the answer of the nation, the way that they responded to Hud's da'wah. If you remember last lesson, um, the uh, the title was da'wah to Hud. So whenever you have a da'wah, you have a uh, ijabah, uh, you, have a, you have a response to a da'wah. So the jawab al qawm, the uh, the 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 response. If you have a da'wah, you have a jawab. You know, so the the response of the uh, the response of the qawm, the response of his people. Kan al qawm fi shughlin. So his people were in shughlin. They were in. They were. They were sort of busying themselves. They were in work. Literally, shughl, shughl means work. If you say shughli, you know, you're saying my job. Shughli, you know, w whatever your job is, right? So they were they were busying themselves basically min al akl with eating, wa shurbi and drinking, wa lahu and kind of idle speech, wa laibi and and playing. Um, wa qad radu bi hayat al dunya. So wa qad, I mean, you know, it's a very kind of um, just a bit of Arabic rhetoric. It doesn't really translate. Um, to, to anything in particular in, in English, really. Sometimes it kind of mean, carries the meaning like indeed or certainly. Um, but, um, you know, at this point, it's just, it's introducing what happened, really. That's its main job here. It doesn't carry a, a, a specific meaning in and of itself. Radu, this is from the verb radia, which means to be pleased with. You know, this is the verb that we're using when you hear people say, radiyallahu anhum. If we're saying like, may, may Allah be pleased with them. You know, or, or when you hear, People talk about um, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. You hear people say radiyallahu anhu. If you say Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu, or if you're talking about like any of the women, like if you're talking about um, our mother Aisha radiyallahu anha, we say radiyallahu anha. Like may Allah be pleased with her. So so they were pleased with. They were pleased, and then we say bi. So radiya bi means to be pleased with something. They were pleased with the life. بِالْحَيَاةِ dunya With the life of this world. وَطْمَأَنُوا بِهَا So this verb um, is, um, you know, is, um, yeah, is the verb to be pleased. It's not to be pleased with something. It's to find contentment in it. Um, yeah, there's, there's an ayah in the Quran when Allah says something, something, something like, um, إِنَّ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطُمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ so in, indeed, with the remembrance of Allah, tatuma in al qulub, the the hearts find rest, so they find peace, or they find contentment or rest, um, biha with it. So they they were pleased with the life of this world, and they found contentment in it. Yeah. Um, daqa, uh, is a is an interesting verb actually. Daqa, obviously, you can see it's a hollow verb. Um, a verb that comes from it is dayyq. If something is dayyq, it means it's narrow. Um, yeah, ضيق. sort of um yeah let, let, let's see the meaning. So قلبهم, so their hearts their heart their heart sort of came restricted to their hearts became sort of closed. Yeah, they sort of they, their hearts became sealed or closed to 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 the kalam of Hud, to the speech of Hud, what Hud was saying. 
وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضُ and, and they would say to one another. Often when you hear بَعْض and بَعْض together two times, بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْض or بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضَ it's usually carrying the meaning of each other. It's a, it's, um, yeah, it's a funny little bit of grammar really there. Like, and it is quite archaic. Like, um, you know, these days you don't really hear people say, you know, تَكَلَّمْنَا بَعْضَنَا بَعْضَا We were speaking, so, you know, because it literally translates to like some, some of us to some of us for some. Yeah, but uh, it carries the meaning of, of each other anyway. When you hear bald and bald together like that, um, yeah, it's carrying the meaning of each other. So they would say to one another, ما يقول هود You know, what, what, what does Hood say? What is he saying? ماذا يريد هود what, what, what does Hood want? نحن لا نفهم كلامه We, we لا نفهم um, Yeah, the verb, this is from the verb فهم Meaning to understand Fahima. La nafhamu. We do not understand kalama or his his speech. You know, what what does he want? What's he saying? You know. It's it's probably if they're ignoring him, really. It's probably it's not because he's not eloquent, it's because they're ignoring him. Qalu Safihun or Majnoon. So we you've probably heard Majnoon. Uh, Majnoon is kind of best translated as crazy. Safihun <laughs> I mean, Safihun is, I mean, it's translated in a few different ways, really. It can sort of mean mad or it can mean sort of um, uh, rebellious or something, maybe. Safihun. Um, is he kind of re rebellious or mad? Or majnoon or crazy? Um, da'ahum. means when. But it's usually when, when you're like talking in the past and you're setting a scene for something. You know, when this was going on, then that other thing happened. Um, it's not, you don't use it for questions. You know, there is a word for when, when you're, when you're asking a question, you say meta, when you're asking a question. Um, or I think in, um, you know, in dialects, they say something like imte. But, um, but, but meta is the word which, um, my, my students on the Arabic in 60 Steps program have just learned that, by the way. Um, meta is asking questions. It's to ask, say when, asking questions. But lemma isn't doing that. Lemma da'ahum, when he invited them. So hudun, hudun, you know, is the one doing the inviting, the inviting of them. Marratan ukhra. So a marra means a time. An ukhra means like, um, means like an other. So like an other time. Um, yeah, or like a, ne a next time. He asked them a next time. Could have said, I mean, yeah, we don't know how many times he's invited them, but if it was a second time, you'd say therni aten. Obviously, it has to be feminine because marra is feminine. Therni aten. If it was a second time, but this is like a, a, a next time, a following time. Marra ten ukhra. Qala ashrafu qawmihi. So the ashraf are like the noble ones. The noble ones of his people said. Um, and then we have an ayah from the Quran here. So, um, inna la naraka fi safahatin. The, the font's a bit funny. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, is like, indeed, nara, indeed, we see ka you, indeed, we see you. Fi safahatin. We see you in, in rebellion, you know, you know, we see you in rebellion. Wa inna lanavunnuka. And indeed, لَنَظُنُّكَ It's from the verb ظَنَّ يَظُنُّ ظَنَّ uh, means to kind of suspect. Um, or it means to think something, but but you're probably going to be wrong later. Um, yeah. Um, and, and we suspect, and indeed we suspect, f from al bin from the liars. We expect, we suspect that you're from the liars. Yeah. Indeed, indeed we see you in rebellion, and indeed we, we suspect you from the liars. Um, this is a very short chapter, by the way. I mean, I, you know, I'm actually recording this late on a Sunday evening, and when I saw how short it was, I thought, yeah, I can squeeze this in at the end of my day. I mean, this is it's not nearly nine o'clock now in the evening, and I, you know, I thought I'd, thought I'd get this recorded for you guys. So it was definitely going out on time this week. Qala ya qawmi, you know, he said, "Oh my people, laysa bi safahatun, laysa bi safahatun." Um, Guys on the program, uh, Laysa was in lesson 10. It's one of Kerner's sisters. 
Um, th and I think I actually did teach in that lesson. I'm sure I did. That um, um, you know, you 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 know, we you, you can say you can say laser. And as it's one of the sisters of Kana, the next word is like what we call monsoon. It takes fathas. You could have said laser. Um, laser safihan. Laser safihan. No, he he is not. He is not Safi, he is not sort of rebellious or, 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 or you know, whatever, mad, mad rebellious. Um, or you can say, Laysa be something. Laysa be, and then what, whoever you're talking about. And in this case, it's um, it's who talking about himself. So he's saying, Laysa be Safer Hatun. You know, there, there is not, there is not by me a Safer, any rebellion. Walakinni. Walakinni, not walakinneni, walakinni rasoolun. But I am a rasool, I am a messenger. Min rabbil alameen, from, from, from the Lord of the worlds. Uballighukum. Oh, nice, okay. This is um, using the verb ballagha. Ballagha. Uballighukum, I'll explain this in a second. Uballighukum. So he does, he does to, towards, towards his qawm, ballagha. Risalat Rabbi. So the, the messages. Risalat is the plural of risala. A risala is a message. So risalat are messages. Um you know so 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 let me talk about this. The form one balagha. Balagha means to reach. So balagha probably means to make something reach someone else. So 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 who is making making the risala to reach his people? You know, he's just delivering a message. He's, he's delivering the messages of his Lord. Yeah, رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّي I'm, I'm delivering the messages of my Lord. وَأَنَّا لَكُمْ And, um, um, what, yeah, وَأَنَا لَكُمْ Not وَأَنَّا لَكُمْ وَأَنَا لَكُمْ That makes more sense. And and I am to, to, to you. I am to you. I love this last bit. نَاصِحٌ أَمِينٌ You know, it's, it's quite rare actually that you... Hear the prophets describing themselves like that, um, but um, but it's nice. So a nasih comes from the verb nasaha, uh, which means to give advice or specifically to give s sincere advice. It doesn't need to, it doesn't necessarily need to be about the religion. Um, it can be, you know, m many of us know the term nasiha. Nasiha, we all should want nasiha from one another. Um, you know, there is a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu when he says that in the deen and nasiha, indeed the indeed the religion is a nasiha. You know, we should we should be giving nasiha to each other. So a nasih is um, is is the active participle of nasaha. You know, those of you on the program, you'll know the the fa'il pattern means like the active participle. So it would make someone a nasih if they are the one who actively does the nasaha. So yeah. Um, nasih. Um, so indeed, I am to you a, an advisor. Amin. I am an amin advisor. Amin just means um, like truthful, truthful. Um, it's the way that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was described among his people um, before his prophethood. Even um, the people used to call him Al Amin, the, the the sort of the trustworthy one. Good, or at least that's what it means when it's describing people. And there are times in the Quran when um, amin can mean sort of safe. If something is safe, um, in Surah Al Balad, um, Allah is um, well. It, it's, it's yeah. It, it's Allah speaking, and Allah is, says, "In the Al Balad, in the Al Balad Al Amin, something like that." Um, anyway, there's an there's a Wahad Al Balad Al Amin, and 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 this and this safe town is what it says in Surah Al Balad. Um, if it's talking, a, if it's talking about a thing, it probably means that it's safe or a place. It probably doesn't mean that. A, a place is trustworthy because that doesn't make any sense. Next lesson, inshallah, hikmah to hudin. So the hikmah is um, is the wisdom, the hikmah of hud, not wisdom in like a sort of very vague sort of um, Gandalf the Grey kind of sense. When we talk about hikmah in the religion, we're talking about the sunnah, really. Um, you know, when when Allah talks about the kitab and the hikmah in the Quran, it's referring to the the Quran and the sunnah. Um, you know, so the hikmah is the example of how how he shows wisdom. Good. So that's what we're going to see next lesson. How long is this lesson? A bit longer. 
Is it, they're usually about a page, aren't they? But I think we only have maybe two or three of these lessons left, actually. So I want to carry on this every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'd like us to carry on doing a walkthrough of something. I think our next thing would be nice if we did a poem, uh, because a lot of you guys have enjoyed my poetry walkthroughs. So we could pick a poem, um, something quite famous, maybe something by Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, maybe something by... Um, you know, maybe something a bit more modern, maybe something by Nizar Qabbani. I've done a walkthrough of one of his poems before. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, if you have any suggestions for that sort of stuff, please put them in the, uh, please put them in the comments below. And uh, I look forward to you guys watching the video next Wednesday, inshallah. Hope you guys have a really nice week. And if you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you did, don't forget to like and share it for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا بلسان قومه ليبين لهم فيضل الله من يشاء ويهدي من يشاء ويهدي من يشاء وهو العزيز الحكيم